The worship of the angels is tasbih, the declaration of the glory and perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, all glory, all perfection belongs to Allah and anything that is of imperfection or deficiency cannot be attributed to him. The angels are actually called al-musabbihun, those that constantly glorify Allah. Allah says about them, yusabbihun al-layla wa nahar la yafturun, that they glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala night and day, and they never become tired of doing so. I want you to imagine for a moment what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about the heavens above, that there is not a single hand span of the heavens, except that there is an angel that has been created to do nothing but glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declare his perfection constantly. Sometimes we get a little bit of a sneak peek into the elaboration of that declaration of Allah's glory and perfection. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described to us those that bear the throne of Allah as being of the most mighty angels. And what is it that those angels say? According to one narration, Four of them say, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, laka alhamdu ala hilmika ba'da ilmik. That all glory and perfection belongs to you, O Allah. You have all praise for your forbearance despite your knowledge, meaning you still show forbearance and forgiveness despite knowing all things. Subhanallah. The other four angels respond and they say, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, laka alhamdu ala afwika ba'da qudratik. How perfect and glorified are you, O Allah? To you belongs all praise for your forgiveness despite your power. How perfect is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that despite his knowledge of all things and despite his power over all things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with his creation with forgiveness despite not needing them. And you see that on the day of judgment that those same angels, when they see the scales being set up, al-mawazin, and the scales are set up for who? They're set up for us as human beings. But when the angels see those scales set up, they would say, Subhanaka, ma'abadnaka haqqa ibadatik. How perfect are you? We did not worship you as much as you deserve to be worshiped. And when we get to Jannah bi'idhni Allahi ta'ala and we are with those angels, tasbih becomes to us like breathing, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Da'wahum fiha subhanaka Allahumma. And Allah tells us in the Quran that our call in paradise is how perfect are you, O Allah, glorified are you. So let's talk about this dhikr and what exactly it means. Subhanallah. Tasbih is first and foremost, as the scholars mention, tanzih. It is to remove every form of imperfection and deficiency from being attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot do tasbih of any other entity, not even in proportion. There is only glory that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah azza wa informs us that everyone and everything glorifies him in some way. So it's removing all attributions of imperfection and then declaring his perfection constantly. First and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares his own perfection. You find the surahs in the Quran that are al-musabbihat, where Allah azza wa jal says, sabbaha lillah, yusabbihu lillah, that all of these things glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he himself says, subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi, all glory be to the one who took his servant from al-Masjid al-Haram in Mecca to Jerusalem and then to the highest heavens. You see the angels constantly being in a state of tasbih. You see the prophets like Musa alayhi salam saying, Subhanaka tubutu ilayk, all glory belongs to you. I have admitted my sins to you. And when Musa alayhi salam asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his brother Harun to be a prophet with him, he says, Kay nusabbihaka kathira, so that we can declare your perfection together, so that we can glorify you together. And then on top of that, Allah says that everything in the heavens and the earth, the heavens and the earth themselves, and everything in between, that which is known and that which is not known, that which is seen and that which is not seen, all of it, tusabbihu lahu, they are all in a state of glorification. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ But you are unable to understand or comprehend their tasbih. So imagine when you are on the prayer mat, when you are making sujood, when you're prostrating and you're putting your head on the ground and you're saying, Subhana Rabbi al-Ahla, 
Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. How perfect is my Lord the Most High? How perfect is my Lord the Most High? How perfect is my Lord the Most High? The ground that you are putting your head on, the angels that are taking up that praise, the Lord that is listening to you are all in a state of declaring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfection. And look at the beauty of this as well, that you say, Subhana Rabbi, how perfect is my Lord? And of the benefits of that is that as much as you're distancing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from any form of imperfection, you're not distancing him from you because he has brought you near. So you're allowed to say, my Lord, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. And so this is a beautiful way in which we understand Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in our religion, how we understand God, that as free as Allah is from all imperfections, He has not freed Himself from His imperfect creation and He calls us back to Him. So when do we use this dhikr on a daily basis? Number one, you find it most frequently in the Qur'an, when something unbefitting is ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَهُ They say that the most merciful has taken a son. Subhana, how can we accept such a thing? Or when you see something that only Allah can do, something that is entirely under His control and under His power. And so you see the lightning, you see things that demonstrate His power and you say, Subhanallah. SubhanAllah, because you understand that you are unable to do those things and unable to control the fate of those things. So freeing him from imperfection, declaring his perfection, looking at the things that he does with his might. And then when you yourself try to honor him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you fall short with all of those things for his sake, then you go back and you say, SubhanAllah. So in tawbah, in your repentance, subhanak is part of your repentance. How perfect are you? Let not my imperfections come in between me and you. When you are bearing the insults or the hardships that come with doing the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, Wasbir ala ma yaqulun wa sabbih bihamdi rabbik. That be patient with that which they say about you, wa sabbih and glorify, declare the perfection of your Lord. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, and when you finish, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you victory, then increase in your tasbih, increase in your declaration of His perfection and seek forgiveness for your own imperfections. And that's why our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that towards the end of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he suddenly increased in his tasbih in particular. And when she asked him why, he said it was in direct response to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ Now, when it comes to our daily usage of this as well in terms of frequency, Allah actually specifies in the Qur'an, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ كَثِيرًا وَسَبِّحْ بِالْعَشِيِّ وَالْإِبْكَارِ So remember your Lord frequently, but وَسَبِّحْ in particular, declare Allah's perfection in the morning and in the evening. And so it is frequent in our morning remembrance, frequent in our evening remembrance, and then after the salah, of course, it is one of the phrases that we say 33 times. And then throughout the day, the Prophet ﷺ said, would any one of you be able to do 1,000 good deeds a day? And we said, how is that possible, Ya Rasulullah? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that if a person says, SubhanAllah, 100 times a day, then that is equal to 1,000 good deeds or the removal of 1,000 sins. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was one of the narrators of the virtue of tasbih, used to do tasbih 12,000 times a day. So you could see how the companions understood this. And by the way, this is when it comes to normal times. Imagine in Ramadan, where one tasbih is worth a thousand, as a Zuhri rahimahullah narrates, or in the best days of dhikr, which are the days of the hijjah So on a normal day, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu would say, SubhanAllah, 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 12,000 times a day. Then you see a hadith that mentions some of the extrapolations. So for example, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. All glory belongs to Allah and with His praise. So you match up His tanzih, removing all imperfections with His thanking, tahmeed, with praising Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whoever says Subhanallah wa bihamdihi a hundred times a day, that that erases your sins even if your sins are like the foam of the sea. In another narration, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever says, Subhanallah al-Azimi wa bihamdihi, 
And of course, this is a shortened version of Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-Azim, that if you say it even one time, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would plant for you a palm tree in Jannah. So just by saying Subhanallah a hundred times, and if you increase that to Subhanallah wa bihamdihi or Subhanallah al-Azimi wa bihamdihi or Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-Azim, you're planting trees in Jannah, you're removing your sins, even if they're like the foam of the sea, and you're having thousands of good deeds written for you and thousands of sins that are erased. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well, كَلِمَتَانِ خَفِيفَتَانِ عَلَى اللِّسَانِ ثَقِيلَتَانِ فِي الْمِيزَانِ حَبِيبَتَانِ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim Two phrases that you say, they're so light on the tongue, they are so heavy on the scale, they are so beloved to Ar-Rahman, to the Most Merciful. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim So they fill your scale as well, and they take so little from your day, from your time, from your tongue. And then finally, dear brothers and sisters, the hadith of Juwairiyah radiallahu ta'ala anha, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam found her remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the day for hours. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi came back to her and he said that I have said a phrase that if you say it, it is equal to all of those hours. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, adada khalqi, wa rida nafsi, wa zinata arshi, wa midada kalimati. So let's break this down. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. How perfect is Allah and all praise is due to Him. Adada khalqi. In accordance with however many of His creation He has created. So how much of the creation of Allah exists, has existed, will exist? Imagine a tasbih for each and every single one of the creation of Allah. Wa rida nafsihi. And in accordance with that which is pleasing to Him. Wa zinata arshihi. And in accordance with the weight of His throne. Kalimati, and the ink that records the words of praise of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about how weighty this dhikr is and engage yourself in it day and night. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimati. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who praise him day and night, who declare his perfection day and night and forgive us for our shortcomings. Allahumma ameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdih Subhanallah al-Azim Subhanallah al-Azim wa bihamdih Subhana Rabbi al-Azim Subhana Rabbi al-A'la Subhanallah wa bihamdih Adad khalqih Wa rida nafsih Wa zinat arshih ومداد كلماته سبحانك اللهم ربنا وبحمدك اللهم اغفر لي سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وتبارك اسمك وتعالى جدك ولا إله غيرك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك